Hey guys and welcome back. Today we are talking about how I spec out my MacBook Pro. I focus on reducing the total cost of ownership, like I always do. And since I'm not a very particular use case, you can benefit from that experience and my thoughts I like to share here. Let's take a look right after the intro what kind of specification I'm going for. Hey guys, it's Matt and welcome back to the channel. That your money is not getting sucked into the black hole we just saw, I'd like to share my experience and my thoughts how to spec out a machine for the next foreseeable future. So I'm aiming for specking out a machine which can really last me at least as long as my MacBook I'm using right now which is a 2013 machine. I'm very really happy with what I chose back then and I would like to be in the next period of my new Mac as happy as I'm right now. It is always important to keep focus on the total cost of ownership. It is not about the buying price. And these machines are expensive, yes, but they last quite a bit. And they depreciate very well. So they have a very high value even after years of usage. When considering the size, 14 or 16 inch, I went straight for 16. Reason being that the battery life is better, that there's a performance boost, what Apple just confirmed built in for the 16 inch only, and the screen is just bigger and it is more productive for most workflows to have more screen real estate. Considering the price jump between the 14 and the 16 inch for getting all these features, it is for everyone different, but for me it is relatively small considering what I'm gaining out of doing that investment. Also I'm considering the total cost of ownership always and I do not expect that the 16 inch is depreciating worse than a 14 inch. So the money you're putting in to that upgrade to a bigger display shouldn't be gone at the end of the usage period and it should materialize in resale value. When looking at the two chip options, I was feeling, well, $200 for the upgrade to the M1 Max is just great and reasonable. However, it comes with a forced upgrade of the memory to 32GB and that is another $400 option, making it actually a $600 upgrade. Not a cheap option you might say, yes and you are right, however we have to see it in context with what we are getting. And looking at the footprint of the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, it's clear that the M1 Max is outperforming the M1 Pro. It has a way more transistors on the board, it's almost double the size. The upgrade to the M1 Max also includes the jump from 16 to 32 GB, which is not just a jump in size of memory, but also in speed because the M1 Max can deliver 400 gigabyte per second. That is twice the speed the M1 Pro can deliver. And that is all assuming that you're in the market for a Pro machine. The MacBook Air, the M1 chips are great and they're really for many people sufficient to use and you can save a ton of money. However, when you're going for the Pro line and when you want to get the best and the most out of the system for the longest time possible from now going forward, then you should carefully consider how you spec out the machine. Because going for a Pro MacBook and missing the last bits and pieces you really might need will frustrate you if you don't have them in your system when it's finally delivered to your doorstep. And now finally, where we burned a lot of money on options, which I feel are really important to pick, we are talking about what we can save. And for me, that is for one, the storage. One terabyte is more than ample for most use cases I have, and I believe for many people. If I want more, and I definitely need sometimes more, I will connect an external drive. 
And yes, we have a lot of ports back and we do not need dongles anymore. So connecting external drives will not be an issue to extend the storage when we need that. Another option where we can save money is the GPU. You can connect four or five displays, I lost count, to that machine and I never do that. If you are in that use case that you have a lot of external 5K or 8K monitors to connect, you might want to spec out the GPU. However, $200 easy save right there on that option. Another option where I save a little bit is the memory. 32 GB is ample for me, for most use cases, I will not really be hold back by that and I do not spec it out to the max of 64 GB which is available for another $400. And here you have it, those are the specs of my system. I really would like to know what you are doing and what you are thinking about my thoughts I just shared. Leave the comments below and I will read through all of them. Like, subscribe to the channel, that would really help out a lot. And as always guys, thanks for watching, have a great rest of the day, stay safe and see you in the next one.